Are we alive? Hey! Sweet as guys, we're shooting a camera gear video. We've been asked a fair bit how we shoot our vlogs and cinematic stuff and we're going to run you through that today. So I'm standing in front of a caravan out here in nature because this is where we live. This is my caravan and also my house. We travel in it full time. My partner Shani and my two kids, Brax and Leo. So that's the background info. That's why we're shooting outside in front of the caravan. But to get into the cameras, I think it's safe to start with the cameras that we first got. And the very first camera we bought was a GoPro Hero 7. I think like most people, we bought this camera because it was on sale. It was a pretty good deal. It was just a thing to have at the time. GoPro 7 was super popular. We bought it and realistically, we didn't use it for months until we started traveling Australia. We started using it to film our vlogs and then we up, well, kind of upgraded and bought a new camera. We bought the Hero 8. So to cover the GoPros basically, I want to start off with the reason why I went with GoPro. Like I said, super sweet deal, got it fairly cheap and basically this was the same story. Another little combo deal on special JB Hi-Fi delivering us the goods here. In terms of cameras themselves, um, I'm not going to cover too much on specs in this video guys, purely because if you want specs, just Google it, you'll find all the specs you need. I'm going to give you a bit of an honest review, a bit of pr some pros and cons on these cameras and how I found using them. So the Hero 7 and the Hero 8, both really, really good built-in stabilization. I really love that about them. The Hero 8 is better than the 7 in the stabilization. You'd expect that being the new edition of the GoPro. Uh, the image quality I found to be a little better too and the audio as well is also a little bit better um, but in saying that the Kira 8 is not looking too good we did actually run this camera over and it still works so thumbs up for robustness of the camera it's all busted up but it still works which means we primarily shoot in the 7 now and the reason being is because this is no longer waterproof which brings me to what we actually use our GoPros for so we actually use them as action cameras now previously we did use them for vlogging but now they are just action cameras. So we shoot our hiking, um, underwater stuff, boating, fishing. If I ever go on a hike to fish off some rocks somewhere, I'll take a GoPro with me because realistically bringing a big camera is rather difficult carrying everything on your back, heading out, getting wet. I've even had to swim to get to my fishing spot sometimes. So Hero or the GoPros have been great for that. Um, bit of a downside is the battery life on GoPro sucks. If anyone if you film on a GoPro, you would know you need to carry a, like a fair few spare batteries if you plan to do some decent filming with one. And we found that the image quality is also capped. So yes, it's pretty good. It does shoot in 4K. Um, it does give you slow-mo and stuff like that. But the overall image quality is just not quite there, not quite where we wanted it, which is why we upgraded to that big rig over there, which I will cover later in this video. GoPro accessories that we use, like you can see here, we have the GoPro 7 in a mouth mount. The 7 lives in the mouth mount and it's in this little clip-in sort of clip-out case. I think I've got this on some B-roll we can play. Um, and the reason being is because it is just so handy to be able to be filming with it in your mouth and your hands on. Great for fishing and stuff like that but also easy enough so it's not like a head mount that you need to unstrap off your head to then directly speak to camera and then readjust. Like it's quite quick to go from mouth back into hand uh, and it just does everything here. And when we do shoot with the 8, which isn't very often nowadays because it's busted, um, it's normally in this little selfie stick thing that came with it. It's also a tripod and the 8 pretty well lives on that. And it's like I said, it's been quite handy, it's been pretty good. At the time of shooting this video, also worth mentioning, GoPro has a Hero 9 out. We haven't bought it yet. We might we might buy it. I don't know. We'll see how we go if the bank account lets us. Another good accessory for the GoPros is this little Artman battery charger. So it's just a USB-C plug, plugs into a USB port. Great for us in the van being 12 volt. We can just plug that in anywhere, charge off our batteries. Also in the back of the ute, perfect spot for it. You can keep three batteries charging, which is awesome. It actually came with three Artman branded batteries. We bought it on Amazon for like 50 bucks. The Artman batteries are pretty crap though. They didn't last as long as the GoPro batteries and when you got to about 30% battery percentage, the GoPros would uh, glitch, freeze, uh, the screens wouldn't work properly, it just didn't work so it wasn't really worth the trouble. We just stuck with GoPro batteries for the GoPros. Another accessory for the Hero 8 we purchased was the GoPro Media Mod. The reason we bought that was 
to add a microphone to try and better the audio, get some better like wind cancelling out of the GoPro 8 when we were vlogging with it. And I'm gonna say not worth it. 120 bucks, fully not worth it. Once you attach it to your GoPro, I found the GoPro slows right down, like a lot. In my experience, one out of every four times I'd use it, it would freeze. Uh, not Fully not worth trying to get better audio if you're having to deal with a camera that isn't working. So, would not recommend buying one if you plan to shoot in a GoPro. Do you reckon I can grab a beer? Like, it's pretty hot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty thirsty too, actually. Intermission's over, guys. We have some refreshments. It's hot, so... All right, next up is the drone we use. This is the DJI Mavic Air 2. This is the second drone we've owned. Previous to this, I did own the DJI Mavic Air, and both times we bought the Fly More Combo. So the Fly More Combo basically includes three batteries, extra propellers, specs are online if you want to find what it actually includes, but they're the parts that matter to me. It comes with a little three dock battery charger, so all three of your batteries will fit onto this charging dock which then plugs in directly to a wall plug and charges your drone batteries quite... It, it actually, they don't charge too quick, I guess. It's worth mentioning. And DJI, again, I don't know. You guys think I'm sponsored. Fully not sponsored. This is just my opinion. DJI have done another really cool thing where gave you this little doohickey, which plugs into one of these batteries. You can plug anything USB chargeable into that and it will charge it like your iPhone. Um, the kid's iPad saved us in the backseat of the car a few times on those long drives and stuff like that. So it's a really cool little thing to have. The controller has phone charging available as well. So if your phone's about to die, you really wanna get that shot, you still can do it. You plug your phone into this, you set it to charging mode, and it will keep your phone charged while you're flying the drone, which is just awesome. I haven't had to use spare propellers yet because I haven't crashed the drone yet, nor did I crash the previous drone. And that brings me to like a hot tip I got for you guys about buying a drone. I reckon just buy a good one straight off the bat. Don't bother buying a cheapie and learning to fly it or anything like that because I feel like you're more inclined to crash it purely because it doesn't have the image detection or the obstacle avoidance that the more expensive drones do come with. And they're just a lot easier to fly, in my opinion. And that way it saves you having to spend more money when you do get better and you want to get better footage with a better camera. Just buy a good one off the bat. This one I think is great. I opted for this Mavic Air 2 over the DJI Pro 2, Mavic Pro 2 I think it's called, because it's got a longer flight time and in my opinion it has a better camera. It's been fantastic. Like what I really love about it is the active tracking works fantastic and for us when we go hiking, um, we're driving, I'm driving a boat or whatever I'm doing, I can just set active track and this thing will just do a fantastic job of following us. The DJI Mavic Air 2 with its built-in obstacle avoidance, it doesn't just stop when it's tracking you, the drone will literally dodge branches and keep following you. And I say branches because that's primarily what it dodges for me. It flies quite quickly, it does like 70 kilometers an hour, I think. Preset modes in the DJI drones is awesome too. So if you're learning to fly and you want to get some smooth cinematic shots, all the preset flying things that this thing can do is great. It does a droney, which is basically like a 45 fly off nice and smooth looks really good you can speed ramp it and stuff when editing it looks fantastic oh if you guys want an editing rundown as well just leave it in the comments below i'll do another video covering kind of the editing process of how we edit our videos but back to the cameras the drone the drone is good i don't use any of the presets anymore i shoot basically all manual with the handle for you. Yeah. <laughs> Right, we're back. Just had to go sort out a lawn mowing issue. But we're good to go again. So yeah, like I said, the drone, the preset shooting stuff is fantastic for learning to fly this thing. They look great. And there's a whole bunch of them you can use. Personally, I do not use them anymore at all. I shoot everything manual because I feel like it, it gives a bit more personality to footage. Like you fly your drone a certain way, certain angles, you do certain things. And it's fun. It's just, you stay learning and getting cool shots. The controller on the DJI Mavic Air 2 is also really good. I like it because it's just big. Like it feels good in your hands. Um, it's fairly easy to set up. You just pop this thing open, phone slides in there and it plugs in. I might actually, I think I might actually even have footage of that so I can just run that. 
Um, flight time is fantastic. It reckons 35 minutes. Um, I reckon I'll get close to that when I fly it. Cons of this drone, things I don't like about it. I really, really do not like these little joysticks that kind of tuck away in here. Personally, I feel like it'd be a lot more practical to have click in, click out joysticks, but it is what it is. We've already lost a pair and they are inexpensive to replace. And you reckon there's anything else I should I should cover? If you're a beginner, you recommend that drone still? Yeah, 100%. Yeah. So I'll, I'll cover that. So if you guys are a beginner and you don't actually own a drone, this drone covers you like it's a beginner drone. You can learn to fly with a drone like this fully, like totally. I would recommend getting this over a cheaper drone if you're a beginner for sure. And if you're shooting more professionally, again, this drone is good. Like it does what you need it to do. You can shoot in a flat picture profile, which is awesome for color grading and stuff like that. And I'll run through that in that editing video. If you guys want me to make it, let me know, I'll, I will. Um, but yeah, basically that pretty well covers the drone. Now it brings me to the big camera, that one right there. So, to make sure we're in the shade still, we've got this thing set up for still shooting, but anyway, this is our big camera. I'm gonna run you guys through exactly what it is. This is our big camera. I call it the big camera because it is bigger than the other cameras. This is the Sony a7 III. And to be honest, this camera is probably a little bit overkill for a vlogging camera but I'll give you the rundown of why we bought it. So here's the setting. We're walking to JB Hi-Fi, we're cruising in, and they have just some ridiculous deals on. And the stars aligned, and we walked out with this camera. Initially, we were gonna buy the Sony A6400, but it literally worked out cheaper for us to buy this. Um, and it was a camera that was gonna grow with us and allow us to do so much more. We were looking for a camera that did both videography and photography, and this camera ticked both the boxes. It takes ridiculously good photos, as well as taking some ridiculously good video. I remember the first time I ever uploaded footage, well, sorry, imported footage to my Mac. Sat there and watched it, and I was just like, David Attenborough is gonna contact me to shoot some National Geographic stuff, because this is unbelievable. Also mention, Upgrading from the GoPros to this is a big step. So GoPros is very point and shoot. You can buy the camera, you can point it, you can shoot it. This thing, not quite. It is a little bit harder to set up. It is a little bit harder to use. There's a lot more settings and stuff to play with, a lot more buttons. But if you do take the time to learn to use it, I promise you that you will be thankful because it is honestly a fantastic camera. If you guys do want some more info on, exact, on the settings and stuff that we're using to shoot with this camera, leave it in the comments, message me. I'll make a video and I'll run through camera settings on this camera, the GoPros and the drone. Price points for this thing, pretty bloody expensive. If you guys own one of these or you're into photography, you'd know just how pricey stuff stuff is. This camera body retails for about 3,100 Australian dollars. This lens here that we use retails for $1,600 and this, um, this, this little pet I've got here is about a $500 microphone, so it is pretty pricey, but I guess you pay for good stuff. So with this camera, you've got the ability to have interchangeable lenses, which is an awesome thing. Basically, in my opinion, different lenses can give you a really different feel to the video, a really different perspective, a really different look. Sorry guys, I'm being bitten by an ant. The lens we use for vlogging is the Sony Zeiss 16 to 35 mm lens and it has an aperture of f4 and i haven't found that f4 aperture to be a problem at all so for you guys that don't know what aperture is it's kind of how much light gets let in to the camera and sort of this angle this, this sort of motion here and it also gives you a sh the the depth of field that you're after too so those photos you see that have like a blurred out background or the video you see that has that really blurred out background is shot very shallow depth of field so at low aperture but with this f4 for vlogging i haven't had any dramas with it at all i haven't used this for shooting some cinematic stuff too it just works well i can just stick it on 35 mil i can still get that creamy background i can do focus pulling and stuff where i bring things in out of focus it allows you to do all that it's a pretty broad range lens it does quite a lot which is i guess why it's the main lens on our camera on the lens itself is this ND filter, this variable ND filter. So basically it just allows you to adjust the exposure by turning this without playing with the camera settings too much, which is pretty important for video. I'll cover that in that settings video if I make it. 
Um, but yeah, if you do want to run this sort of setup, get yourself a variable ND filter. If you plan to shoot video, it'll save you some headaches. When we originally bought this camera, it didn't come with this lens. We didn't buy this lens straight away. We bought this lens. So this is a Sony 50mm lens or Nifty 50. It is a 1.8 aperture, so it allows you to get that shallow depth of field that you're after. Some people have said this lens isn't great. Um, I guess because it's a fairly cheap lens in comparison. I think this one cost us like 500 bucks, where like I said, that one was over triple the price. But I like this lens, I really like it. It shoots some good photos, it shoots some really cool videos. I primarily use this to shoot B-roll sort of stuff. So B-roll, for those of you that don't know what that is, it's just the footage that I'm using when I'm, that I'm playing while I'm talking. to put a sort of close in shots to kind of give you a bit more of a look at what I'm using. The microphone we use on this thing is the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus. Ridiculously expensive microphone, I guess. I think this whole setup here is like 500 bucks just for the microphone and you have to pay, that includes the dead cat, but you do have to buy that separately. I thought it would have come with it, but no, you have to buy this dead cat separately. But it is the only microphone in the market that I'm currently aware of that isn't the Sony microphone, I think that's they've just brought out, that turns on automatically with the camera. So you turn the camera on, the microphone turns on as well and you have audio there. I have shot on the video mic pro, previous to owning this one and there is a lot of dead footage because the audio isn't there because it's a second thing you have to turn on and off and obviously it is a lot better at doing its job as a microphone than what a unpowered microphone would be and the price point basically says that $80 for a basic shotgun mic versus 450 bucks for this mic plus the dead cap. Another accessory, this little Joby bendy tripod sticky thingy. This is a baby, this is tiny. <laughs> I don't know why, but we bought the one kilogram version of this. There's a three and a five. The guy at the store did tell us you shouldn't be doing that. You should definitely buy the three or the five, but us being tired asses, we left <laughs> with this and saved 20 bucks. And now we have a tripod we can only really use with the 50 mil lens with it's small and light. It doesn't support the weight of the camera with the bigger lens on there, so yeah, but these are pretty good. You can also hold them as a bit of a selfie stick. I don't, I just hold the lens itself. My little arms don't allow me to hold the extra weight, unfortunately. Ah, oh, you guys are probably wondering, how am I getting such good footage holding my good camera, right, if I'm not using my good camera to shoot this? Well, let's show you exactly what's going on here. <laughs> this is Troy. Troy back here. Hi. <laughs> so Troy's come out today to give me a hand to shoot. Troy's also uh, pretty passionate about videography. And I don't even think I've said this to him yet, but I'll tell you guys. So watching Troy's videos was probably one of the things that made me go out and buy a better camera. Like it literally inspired me to become better at videography and shoot better video. Thanks to Troy. Troy also has a YouTube channel, Troy Staines. Thanks Troy. Thank you. I might just do a quick overview then. Should I just do a quick rundown, a quick overview? Prices and stuff. I'll give you guys a quick rundown. So big dog, Sony a7 III. We run two GoPros, a seven and an eight. And we run the DJI Mavic Air 2. Prices for all this. This setup here, about 5K. This was about 500 bucks. This, I think was 600 bucks. And this in the fly mall combo was at $1,900. So that's the current kit we use in the camera gear. The bag we got is the Lopro, Lopro Flipside 400AW. That's the one we got. And this is a Facebook Marketplace bargain. 100 bucks and we got one of these. I had no idea how much camera bags were worth until I went to go shopping for one. I left the store blown away and Marketplace. I slid into this girl's DMs. She hooked us up with this bag for 100 bucks. And it fits everything in there perfectly, which is good. It is pretty heavy though, and I guess for the stuff that we do, hiking and the rest of it, we kind of try and keep it as simple and as light as possible, but no guarantees you might turn into a tank if you start doing filming and hiking at the same time. Like me, obviously. Anyway. <laughs> so videography and photography is a passion that started for myself and Shani about a year ago when we actually started traveling full time. Before that, I was a painter, so I painted houses. That's what I did for a profession. 
um, and now I really enjoy shooting videos and Shiny really enjoys shooting photos and I guess it's one of those things that you just stay learning forever like it's so good to be able to stay learning I think it's really good for your brain and there is still so much for us to learn and I guess you do got to start somewhere so if you're watching this video thinking about buying a camera I reckon just go do it go buy a camera whatever your budget is go start somewhere start editing start shooting or start taking some photos sweet are we done that's it. you reckon we're done we're done if you like this video give it a thumbs up guys we haven't really done an information based video before so if you guys want to see more of this sort of stuff let us know happy to make it it's pretty fun to shoot i guess if you want to see more from us too please hit subscribe if you're new here and you do want to check out our vlogs feel free to go take a look we'll hopefully see you guys next week all right cheers guys have a good one